Hello friends, my name is Linda Dolkey and I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! in Australia. And today I'm going to be making these cards with you, these ones here. And these are taking the technique that I showed you last time, the blended alcohol technique, one step further to create a rainbow or a sunset background. Um, if you'd like to see the previous video where I go into in more depth of, about the technique, um, you can certainly go back and view that one. It was the one I did only a couple of days ago. But today I'm going to give you a really quick rundown on how easy it is to do these. I hope you enjoy it and have fun. So today's card is actually part two, really, of the technique I showed uh, most recently, my previous video. I did the um, blended alcohol background technique, and I showed you how to make these cards. This is the one I actually made in that last video. Um, but as you can see, they turned out each one completely differently. And I'm going to show you, um, using the same technique, how to get a rainbow effect. So this card here, you can see I've got my um, kind of like a sun sunset kind of thing going on in the background but I love the haphazard nature of this technique and I want to show you how you can easily do that. You're going to need for this a piece of uh, neutral coloured light cardstock. I'm using Whisper White from Stampin' Up which is a great cardstock nice and it, nice and uh, smooth to work on. I've also got a piece of acetate cut to roughly the si same size as my other piece or you could also make it slightly larger but roughly the same size. And the other thing you're going to need for this is some rubbing alcohol. In Australia, I'm using isocol, but any rubbing alcohol will be fine. And some blends markers. Now, to get the sunset look, I've chosen this um, range of colours. I'm using dark mango melody. I'm using dark, uh, I think I'm using dark for all of these, um, pumpkin pie. Then poppy parade. And also the dark of the rich raspberry. So they're the four that I'm using today. Really, really simple. You're going to start by, I usually start with my lightest colour first, and I'm working from the top to the bottom. Sorry about the squeaky noise, that's just part of uh, using these. And you're just going to really roughly an inch or so of, um, of scribble. And then I'm going to move down to the next colour, which will be the um, pumpkin pie. And just gonna that just butts right up against the the previous one. Then we have Poppy Parade. They all make a different squeaky noise, which is quite amusing, but uh, you get the idea anyway. And then we have. I'm using a little bit more of that. I'm just covering the most of the whole thing. I'm staying away from the edges, um, but you know it's totally up to you. You could go all the way to the edges if you want to. Then we're going to go to our isocol. Now for this, I'm just going to drop this straight from the bottle. But if you wanted to, uh, you could use a dropper, and that would allow you to get um, completely round circles in your background. I'm not really worried. I'm happy for this to blend, and I'm going to. There's only a tiny hole here at the top, so I'm just going to put a few drops here and there. Try not to go too overboard. That one was a big one, but it doesn't really matter. There is no right or wrong to this. Okay, if you wanted to, you could um, you could use uh, a brush to move this around, but I'm actually not going to. I'm just going to let it spread. As you can see, the alcohol in the alcohol markers makes them spread. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this piece here and I'm just going to pop it straight on top of that acetate piece. Okay, just rub it over the back and then I'm going to turn it over and you'll be able to see there's a little bit of movement there because there is it's still a little wet underneath but I'm able to push it around. Now what I discovered happened the other day when I did this was that not all the colour transfers. It just transfers where the alcohol uh, mixed with it. Okay, so if you wanted to you could go back I mean, I quite like that actually as it is But if I want a little bit more of this down the bottom, I can put this bit of alcohol rubbing alcohol where the um, Where it didn't come out before and Maybe even a little bit up here So yeah, I, I actually have no idea what it's going to look like. Um, this time I'm just going to pop that straight over onto here. 
and you can kind of see how the the alcohol moves it around and it should have moved a little more and it has okay and that's how it's looking now and I would just leave that to dry it's as simple as that okay for this one I then use the um, the tree branch from the Sweet Silhouettes die, which I cut out with my die cutting machine just out of black cardstock and pop that straight over the top. I popped a sentiment here on the bottom, um, just on a strip of white and put a little bit of gold um, glitter. The gold glitter is being retired from our current catalogue, so if you love that, um, you get it soon because it will be gone. And... Um, and then I mounted it on a piece of black cardstock and then put the whole thing onto a whisper white thick piece of cardstock. And that's how simple it is to do. Isn't that easy? Just a quick one for you today to show you how you can change up the technique I showed you last time. If you want to see more about um, the ins and outs of the technique, go back and look at the previous video. It is called the blended alcohol technique. Um, but um, today I'm showing you how to get kind of a, a different look with it. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, if you don't have a demonstrator and you live in Australia, you're very welcome to shop with me. Um, just follow the links in the description and uh, it'll take you to either my blog or Facebook page and from there you can go shopping. Um, have a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.